So it's a bit of a, a random um, one again, and it's scenting vintage villains, like visit villains from from our youth, our younger days, and that. Um, just cause, yeah, why not? That is literally all there is to say about this video, and um, <laughs> I'm sure we'll all remember some of them. Um, don't need to waffle on anymore. We'll crack on. So I'm going to start with a very a legend who's been brought back more recently. Of course, I'm talking about the late great Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I didn't know he was late. Uh, who who knew he died? I mean, he's of course a fictional character, which I suppose you can say whatever you want about him. Um, and apparently, he's a really great guy. Now, Hannibal Lecter, as we know him from the films rather than the books was a kind of charming cannibalistic serial killer let's be fair and he did only eat and kill people who kind of deserved it um, he didn't kind of do it to decent people or people who um, you know he enjoyed or were intelligent so I think um, the person who brought back this weird reference is pretty safe um, from being his friend. He's more likely to be a nice lobster aperitif, isn't he, really? <laughs> anyway, we all know who Hannibal Lecter is. Um, so charming, cannibalistic serial killer. Um, very intelligent, very thoughtful, very deep. What fragrance have I scented him with? I've gone for Gulan's insolence. Now I know what you're saying, but I think this is very much him. Yes, he's a very like wealthy academic. He's got a lot of money. He could wear anything he wants. Um, he does have a kind of terrifying side to him. But I think in real life, he'd be quite a friendly kind of purple floral wearer. So I think powdery musky violets are pretty much suited to him. I think he'd he'd just love them. And uh, he's got that kind of gentle, elegant class, that subtleness. And these are probably something he'd like to flavour his meat with as well. Um, so that's all I really need to say about the, the late, great Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Next. So next is someone who maybe is more a millennial kind of um, childhood. Well, there's a programme called Rugrat. Now I could have easily had Tommy in here because Tommy was a bit of a bullying psychopath who made all his friends do things they really didn't want to do and scared them and he whined on a bit and he always got his own way. But no, not him, his cousin Angelica who was a, a sadistic animal torturing um, nightmare really. She, she was... Not a pleasant thing. Whereas Tommy's kind of bullying was more subtle and more psychological, Angelica was more likely to give a good smack to someone or, you know, punch them in the face or shout at them um, or pull a cat's tail. She was, she was quite a sinister little character, really. And uh, who I've gone for her with is Swedoff's Bohemian. Now, wait, this is big leather, big whiskey massive bold statement big woods it really is a fragrance with a lot of presence and to be fair angelica was never shy or quiet about being the the kind of bullying psychopath that she was whereas tommy you know he was more sneaky wasn't he but she was she was loud and proud that she was um top dog and that if they didn't do what they were told they'd get a good smack so she's gonna wear something really bold really attention grabbing something that could even be considered on, on on a certain person quite foreboding so yeah that's Swedoff's Bohemian for Angelica from the Rud Rat. Next is one of the greatest TV villains of all time um, from the X-Files and um, someone again we'll all be kind of uh, familiar with uh, CGB Spender was his real name um, and he was 
a complicated chap. Um, he was kind of the top of, well, not the top of this syndicate, but part of this syndicate to, to, to protect humanity from the knowledge of the alien colonists. He was also Mulder's father. Um, see the other Spender's father and William's granddad. No, William's father, in fact. Somehow he got Scully pregnant. So he was quite a, a sinister chap. He didn't really have any um, qualms about what he was doing. It was all for the greater good and all that. He knew how to get his own way. He was probably very high up in the secret government agency and he, he smoked a lot. That was kind of his signature. Lots of uh, lots of smoking. So what I've picked for him is obviously going to be a very smoky, dark, but majestic, wonderful fragrance. And that's Silver Oud from uh, Amouage, which as we know is a, bit, a little touch of the animalics there, that kind of dark, dangerous side of him. All the smouldering embers and big dose of smoke from silver birch and that and it kind of the smoke kind of lingers like a silver cloud in the air like cigarette smoke so I just think it's uh, perfect for him I do find him a little bit misunderstood in his way he was just looking after himself and uh, he thought he was doing the right doing the right thing really um, and um, whether it's right or wrong and sinister and killed lots of people I suppose he had the greater good and the protection of himself. And he was also quite immortal. He died several times, but never really died. So there we are, CGB spender, cigarette smoking man, Amouage Silverwood. Next is a great misunderstood villain. Some of them are misunderstood. Of the Deep, and that's Ursula from The Little Mermaid. It was a giant squid. Sure she was a squid? Yeah, she shot ink, didn't she? She was a squid. I mean, we don't know the full backstory, but she was quite wronged by Neptune. The kind of, um, in love with himself, ruler of the sea. And he, of course, had this beautiful daughter who was going to get it all. And she was just rather jealous. Um, so yeah, so she, she did bad things. Um, she stole Ariel so that she could... Um, ultimately blackmail Neptune and get his trident to be queen of the sea, as you do. I mean, why not? Why should it be some vain, topless dude in charge of the sea? Anyway, what I've picked for her, and I think it suits her perfectly, is Moogler's alien. No one is it purple. I mean, there is that. But them musks and that dark jasmine, mixed with apparently the busiest road in County Durham all of a sudden, it did it, it, the, the musks, the dark jasmine, the kind of uh, seductive darkness, the, the, the kind of um, mysteriousness, the, the kind of beckoning you in. I mean, I think Disney's Little Mermaid doesn't do justice to what Ursula would have been. I think she'd have been a very... Well, I mean, is, the, is Ursula attractive for a squid? I suppose so. I mean, why not? Well, she would have been this kind of femme fatale, wouldn't she? Who knew how to get her way. And I think Alien is just the perfect fragrance for somebody like that. So for Ursula, here's Moogler's A. Next, for, um, you'll notice a lot of sci-fi in here. But again, for people my age, one of the greatest villains out of all Star Trek. The most kind of charming crazy, a little bit malignant, a little bit naughty, the all-knowing, omnipotent Q, um, who was just portrayed fantastically by John Delancey, the actor. Just, um, he had a sense of humour, he was a little bit dark, but everything he did was kind of to help them along. He wasn't particularly a bad guy, he was a bored god, if you like, wasn't he? So he's always up to all sorts of mischief and having a bit of fun and whatnot. This wind is now going to be my enemy. So what would a cheeky, all-knowing, magnificent legend of a godlike being wear? Dupom, of course. Well, come on. Um, he's going to be a legend. 
he's gonna stand out he's gonna wear something fun and interesting a mix of like cherry kind of feel jasmine sometimes a little bit something naughty in there the white musks all these fantastic flowers all kind of otherworldly pushed in there of course he's gonna be dupont and he's, he's gonna spread that joy and that fun and yeah that's it really Q from Star Trek The Next Generation and other Star Treks the godly uh, being from the Q Continuum would of course wear the greatest legendary fragrance of all time Dupont next is um, Cruella de Vil um, yeah she was a villain but I mean you know she just liked nice things nice coats and money and you know she, she's probably a very modern person really uh, maybe they just didn't have the technology for the faux fur back then. But yeah, we all know Cruella de Vil. And, uh, she was, you know, quite a, quite a good-looking lady, wasn't she, I suppose? With a bit of class and style. Again, I do not think we should wear animal fur. But just maybe she had no choice during her, her time of living. Um, uh, well, how would we send Cruella de Vil? That kind with a kind of vintage look and a long cigarette and that. Coco from Chanel. This kind of spicy, heavenly, dark, rich, magnificent floral with um, just all that little bit of musk in there and a kind of naughty touch. Um, you know, the kind of alamanic, alamalic thing is kind of representative of the fur and a kind of big, huge, full of personality and rage and evil, of course, <laughs> kind of uh, one to go with her. So for Cruella de Vil, it's Chanel's Coco. Now the next one is the Sheriff of Nottingham, who, of course, is a fictional character, whatever people people believe. Um, and to be fair, it was Sheriff of Nottingham. I mean, the poor bugger. If you've ever been to Nottingham, you know that's going to be a hard job with constant shootings, riots, robberies, knife point stabbings and it's it's kind of if you ever go to the East Midlands Nottingham is the area I'd say avoid it's really kind of a wild world all of its own um, if you if you visit there go to Derbyshire that's that's the best place on earth really so yeah the, the Sheriff of Nottingham certainly had his work cut out um, because the rich Lord Loxley Robin Hood was um, stealing from some rich people and not really giving it back to the poor at any point there other than his merry men in all the stories I've seen um, you know it was just quite a, an odd chap really uh, that Robin Hood and uh, so the Sheriff of Nottingham obviously he lived round Sherwood Forest of course he probably didn't and Sherwood Forest didn't necessarily mean it was in Nottingham sure be a noisy bugger um, so I'm going to go for a Lamb Vital, which is from To The Fairest London. Now this one is a kind of green one. It is a forest. It's like a dark kind of spring, summer forest. Kind of very verdant and green and the herbs are coming through. So sort of the smell, the nettles. Kind of has a, a little bit of a medicinal kind of anise lavendery thing through it. It's absolutely glorious. But it's a dark green one that will perfectly represent um, Sherwood Forest and the Sheriff of Nottingham, who in my mind is always going to be Alan Rickman, isn't it? So yeah, that's that one. Next is from one of them great 90s series, which kind of, I suppose, started the path of a Netflix series and that, except there was more than six episodes because the actors actually used to work back then and not be slaves to some terrible networks that charge you loads of money and cancel the seasons halfway through. So Ben was from Lost and he was one of the others. He wasn't just one of the others, he was the leader of the others. And he was kind of really badly treated, kind of bullied by his father as a kid. But he just wanted to belong somewhere. So the, uh, the others, in the commas, took him in and made them his, his leader. He apparently he could hear the voice of Jacob now Jacob represents order and 
and doing things right and that and following the rules. So he's kind of a bit of a tyrant, actually. The the dark Jake, the man in black, was probably the, you know, he, he let people make their own decisions and stuff. But anyway, Jacob kind of ended up teaming up with him. Not Jacob, Ben, and he killed Jacob. So he's a very complicated guy. He loved his daughter who he'd adopted. Even though he was a maniac, he did have love in him. And he did sort of care about his people. But yeah, what fragrance would Ben wear? Well, there can be only one. He wasn't a particularly exciting or charismatic kind of person. But he had a bit of money. He'd go for something. Chiller on spot. Chiller on. That's what I was going to say. That's what he'd go for, isn't it? If I got rudely interrupted by a jogger. Um, now, he wouldn't have gone for the, the original formulation with a lot of kind of richness of the resins, the beautiful peachiness, the florals, the kind of usual beautiful uh, Chanel citrus. He would have gone for the reformulation, the kind of washed out, meh, what the heck is this kind of version where everything's kind of literally washed out. It's still fairly pleasant and easy to wear, but it's pretty nondescript. Nobody would notice you or it particularly. Um, so yeah, that's what Ben from Lost would have gone for. Uh, Chanel's Allure On. Next, from one of my favourite shows ever, an iconic show of the time, and she was in both Buffy and Angel, but that's Drusilla. Drusilla was a kind of melancholy, um, sadistic maniac. Um, she perhaps should have never been turned because she had to face reality as this kind of broken, crazy woman. And she was obviously very attractive and, and very kind of alluring in her, in her own way. She was very, very dangerous. Um, she could snap and snap your neck at any moment, really. She was very jealous, sometimes very kind of childlike because of her, her mental illness and she'd... Uh, you know, chew on animals, she'd probably eat babies, who knows. She was she was quite a a dark, a very dark vampire. Um and what I've gone for Drusilla is um Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. Now why have I gone for this? Because she has kind of bright moments and kind of the the kind of gourmandy touch to it. It's got this uh, sharper rose running through it that turns quite powdery and lovely. It's got the little bit of pomegranate and obviously that connection to the underworld with pomegranates. Um, it's still got that marshmallow fluff fluffiness in there. It's, it's musky and it's lovely. It's somehow a little bit brighter than the original. But because of them slight sharp nuances in there and the green from probably the neroli and the, and the thorns of the roses, I just think it would suit her perfectly. So for Drusilla from um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is uh, Love Don't Be Shy Extreme from... And finally, possibly the greatest villain of anyone's lifetime, certainly of my childhood. She, she literally killed many people. She uh, stole vast amounts of money from the poor um, to give to the rich. She privatised everything, so now our water filled with sewage, which has never invested a penny of its profits, is paid out. She privatised the rail industry, the, basically every utility industry. She'd probably have privatised breathing if she could. Um, she was a, mon a monster and a menace. And that's, of course, um, Margaret Thatcher, who, you know, sadly wasn't a fictional character. She was just a, a wicked person of the 80s who was also a war criminal um, and somehow has many statues and is loved by, by Tories and um, very strange people who weren't affected by her basic malice. She also brought in rules to basically try and outlaw homosexuality again. She was a bigot, she was a racist, a war criminal, a child starver. She was... But about as bad as you could get. Now, what a fragrance of a pick for this kind of real-life villain. The Promise from Frederick Mal, um, which is this kind of... It's this kind of sour, bitter brown apple 
mixed in with the rose and this this one does have thorns this is a really kind of dark one and it kind of pushes you out you can it's a really strong fragrance that you can't escape now i do like this don't like the woman but um it, it's just perfect for her that bitter twisted evil inside her the kind of rotting away of of flesh i mean people say she's dead she's probably come back up from the ground truly despicable human being um, and this fragrance because she had lots of money obviously probably would have suited her quite well um, but these are just my well they're not just my opinions you can see the evidence of her all around us so yeah for margaret thatcher the uh, nightmare villain of many many uk people and people across the world with what she did is frederick miles the promise so yeah, this was just a bit of a fun one. Ended quite dark, but you know, it's important to put a bit of reality in there, isn't it? And spot these um, these people who basically want to make take us back to feudalism and having no human rights and no rights at all and just working in where, uh, workhouses, etc. So yeah, you know, it's just, it's what it is, isn't it? And I'm sure many of us remember these villains from our youth and um, we're quite scared by them as well it was just a, yeah, a bit of fun um, what about you how would you send these people um, what who were your kind of childhood vintage kind of villains that you grew up with do you still remember them now do you still enjoy the shows doesn't need to be a long one all right folks thanks bye